Well, hello, 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 everybody. <sighs> well, okay, listen. It's been a long time. All right. Uh, back on track. Listen, it's been a hard, 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 um, hard time, right? You know, uh, for those of you that are new, for those of you that have been here a long time, I just like to thank all of you followers that you're still there. You guys are awesome. You guys rock. Uh, you know, losing a nephew unexpectedly just throws you off track of everything. Hard time concentrating the whole nine yards. I had put on like 40 pounds. Um, it's, uh, and I just, I only lost like 10 recently. So it's uh, been like two months now that uh, just a little bit, things are getting a little bit better and stuff like that. But um, look, back, man. All right. So uh, that's just it. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to continue from where we left off in December or ja let's say January, um, the February or March videos, those ones are, you know, they're just up there, but whatever. So let's start, let's do everything new and back and that's just it. So let's just start from the top. This is an excellent song. All right, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk a little bit about CloudMD. Um, and we're going to look into just maybe a couple of other um, stocks that I think are going to be big potential plays within the next next few years. So yeah, we're talking about I'm talking about high growth stocks, though penny stocks that have the potential of getting really really big. And if you're making other plays and you got some stuff sitting on the side. Those little babies, at one point in time, if the right ones are picked, they're going to go up to the sky, and then we're all going to be happy. We're all going to be in this together, jumping around, and having a great time. So, CloudMD, is it worth it to still be in the stock? I say yes. Let's talk more about that. What else are we looking for? Neolithium. Talked about Neolithium for a very long time. And um, when it was like at 35 cents, 60 cents, look where it is today. All right, it's almost reaching five dollars. If I had money, big money that I could afford to put into Neolithium a year ago, if I had that 20,000 lying around, 30,000 lying around, that I could have just dropped it in there and just left it alone, I would have put in like 20, 30,000, 40,000 even into Neolithium. Just because of you know they're partnered up with CATL, yeah. Okay, some people say, yeah, man, that's a big chance. Why would you be doing something like that? If I have that kind of money running around, like lying around, it's because I could afford to lose it, right? Think about it. But if I could, if I had that money, Neolithium, man, that would have been huge, 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 and it still is, and it's still got the potential of skyrocketing when you compare them to companies that are producing that's a long time. I mean, look at Albemarle. All right, uh, they're at over two hundred and thirty dollars a stock, from what I seen yesterday. And then you look at SQM, the uh, you know Sociedad, uh, something uh, Chile. You know both these companies are in the lithium triangle, and that stock there is over fifty dollars. So, okay, so let's get into a little bit of Cloud D and let's get this show on the road. Here we go. <clears throat> just gonna let you know i'm not going to be doing very much editing um actually i'm going to be doing more live uh events live shows um uh doing some with money and uh that should be one tomorrow as well or friday and uh, after that, I'm probably going to be doing mostly um, live shows so that, that way we could interact with each other. Okay, and answer some questions. So um, as you can see, the backgrounds uh, changed a little bit and all that for a reason. Um, what I want to do starting in January, um, and of course, like a reminder, February, my nephew passed away, so things, you know, uh, just uh, changed at that point. But um, I was going to be interviewing CEOs. This was the big thing that I wanted to do. And um, I had started making uh, some of the changes. And uh, then, you know, once uh, I knew I couldn't be doing videos anymore for a while, 
I ended up uh, changing the background the way I wanted to, to have it look a little bit more professional. And, you know, there's no more comic books up, but as a reminder of where we started, you know, <laughs> we got, you know, reminders back up here, okay? So, you know, we know where we came from, we know where we're going. And, you know, live events, CEOs, I want to talk to other YouTubers out there, you know, and I want to make this fun and, con you know, connect. So I wanted to be a little bit more professional, right? A little bit more professional. So let's go with CloudMD. CloudMD, look, they're the same company as before. Uh, I, um, I, you know, it, I, the only thing with CloudMD, which, um, you know, really sucked. And I don't, I honestly don't think that we'd be at, you know, 158 now if it wasn't for what happened in March. Um, you know, I, I'm on, you know, I was on, um, the older cloud MD, um, group and, uh, the one that, uh, with the one that Douglas was in charge of and, um, you know, and he, Douglas was right, man. He called it right. Like, listen, he called it right. You know, he, he was saying like, this is done. It's finished, you know, the, the play and, you know, and I believe what he meant by that and what he's you know saying, I'm just interpreting here. But at that time of it going up and being the main stock, because if if the sh you know that much shares wasn't sold by Dr. Hamza, then CloudMD would still be a, a you know a very big strength with the retail investor. Um, we got a lot of people holding the bag, a lot of people that can't afford to sell, you know, and then some people are just saying screw it, I'm just taking some of the losses because I'm missing a lot of other plays out there and stuff like that. So that's why this this you see this company slowly slowly. You know, with the retail investors starting starting to get out and you know it's affecting stock. Now people could say, well, what are you talking about? Well, it's not too complicated. If we go back in March where the decline starts, uh, you're going to see here, you know, Dr. Hamza here, it says here 039, and then uh, if you go into other places, you'll see the 0321. Uh, I think that being uh, in simply Wall Street, you'll see it's got the same numbers though, four four million dollars. And the timing couldn't have been any worse, right? Because you're looking at March. So here you have the 9th, you have the 21st over there. And what really, really sucks is that the vaccines are approved, FDA approved in December. Then you have all these issues with, um, you know, trying to get the vaccines out. They had to be in freezers, you know, because it's mRNA and the whole nine yards. So you have all of the shipping issues that come after creating, and then you have you know, you have to create the vaccines, right? You got to like build it up. So you have this time that is just, you know, going by and you have like January and stuff like that. And, you know, um, at the time's going by. Now you see that April's around the corner and it's springtime. And we know when springtime's coming and everything, people go more outside. So therefore what ends up happening is that, you know, you start seeing with, you know, the control that we're trying to do by bringing down the curve with you know social restrictions, keeping distancing, washing your hands when you're going into places and stuff like that, you see that in, especially in the springtime, sometimes things start to decline, right? It starts to go down. But now you have vaccines, you know, you have around February and all this kind of stuff. People are getting the jab, you know, and you have April around the corner, and it sucks because the timing, you know, whether it is or isn't, is that is it's a, it's important depending on how who is perceiving it. So naturally, from the company standpoint of whoever sold the shares and stuff like that, their perception or their reality is something different than what we perceive and whatever. But from a retail standpoint, from a person that's investing on the outside that has no direct contact with anyone to tell me exactly what's going on, you know, I'm not within a very, you know, the social group of, you know, the inside workers and all this kind of stuff. Well, you know what? Or if I'm not friends or, well, that's $4 million. Four million dollars. We're like, what the heck's going on? What? Whoa, you know. And you know, you have then the senior officer of issuer, uh, uh, Thindal Kanjan, and on the same day, he's pulling out a million as well. Whoa, that's this is a hard hit to the retail investors, right? It's it's a hard, hard hit, you know. And then you see that, you know, they're sold. It's sold at two seventy. We don't have to even go to the graph. We could just do this here. Just do this here. 270, 270. This is a big sell-off. These are the dates. Look at that the 18th over here. All right. 
And then you on the 18th, like 221, 03, 18, so same month, same year, just a, you know, nine days later, you're at 205. Look at this, look at the significant difference between the price here. That's that's massive. And then go to the 24th over here. Hamza's buying at 175. That's that is almost a dollar under what he sold it at, you know, in the same month. It's not even the end of the month yet, okay? And that's just crazy because then you see, look, there's more acquiring. So you're selling at 270 and then you're buying back for almost a dollar under. Why is investing? Why is investing? You know, people would say, well, why would he have sold for this much and now, you know, buying back at these? So people would want to know, like, well, you know what? Look, you know, you have uh, 17,000 here, 17,000 here, 25,000 here, uh, 32,000 here. So the amounts are, are 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 gaining really, really, really fast over here. You're at seventy four thousand already over here, right? So you know you get another seventeen thousand volume here at one seventy five uh, and one eighty seven because now it's start it's trying to recuperate, and then you know we have it going up and down, up and down, up and down for a while. So naturally, of course, perception. Retail investors are going to be pissed. People are going to pull out their money and all this kind of stuff. Look at what happened with the old group, you know, that was going on. And, you know, the shutdown of that group. Yeah, Between Plays opened up their own group right away in order to to help out um, all those that were lost in the retail investor world to bring that group somewhere else real quick in order to make sure that, you know, we're still there. We're all talking and that group exists. and. You know, most people from the old group are on that group. So that sucked. But, you know, when you look at it now, you know, Doc Hamza, he sees op buying opportunities here. And you got it at 159, 160, you know, and, you know, look at how much shares he's got back. He's got over the amount. It was like 254 on when he sold uh, the 4, 4 million. And now we have even, he has even more now than he did before. So he had 26 here. Naturally, um, you know, we were listening to, uh, you know, Doc Hamza in those days speak and, you know, saying all the things that, you know, were nice buy up as much. Look, retail investor, we're not buying worth 75 million shares or whatever, 2 million shares, 1 million shares. We got, you know, smaller, smaller investors in the whole nine yards, limited um, amounts of money. So when the, when the stock's going up for us and it's hitting three dollars, like that, we're freaking out. We're happy. You know, and we're going, oh my God, four or five's coming up. We're going to pass well health. We got better technology. We got this app that's killer. You know, when I say better technology, I'm looking mostly at the app. App is killer. You know, you could open it everywhere. Footprint clinics, it makes sense. Others are not doing the footprint clinics at that time. And what ends up happening as time goes on, I see a video on there where you have dialogue after they went IPO, uh, the Quebec company mostly, but very well known over here. Uh, dialogue, uh, we actually uh, use them for the company that we're with, uh, and they're really, really great. So, Dialogue, and then you got Cloud MD, and then you have Well Health. They're all talking together. They're in our own little video booths there on Zoom and stuff like that. And Well Health comes out and says, you know, that they ended up getting um, foot, footprint clinics because they realized that, well, you know, because I always said it, I used Maple as an example. Well, it makes no sense. If they you need to see a doctor, they're gonna refer you to a clinic, which is not theirs, somebody else's clinic. Well, if you're if the future is telemedicine, wouldn't those clinics have telemedicine too? So why would they want to go eventually back to a place that doesn't have footprint clinics if the footprint clinic there you're actually seeing a doctor, physically seeing a doctor there, and they're like, okay, well, give us your email address because we're gonna send you a link uh, that you can do telehealth with us. So when you don't have to come, you know, over here we can do stuff and we can talk to each other. Like you're gonna lose it, right? So Well Health realized that and they adapted, which is a, a, a great sign of a company is to adapt. So Well Health is opening up and getting footprint clinics so they don't lose their customers. And he said it too. He goes, you know, we realize that, you know, what are we gonna do if we don't have footprint clinics and we have to present see a doctor, we're gonna go send them to a clinic, which might have telehealth. And you know, he says that and Dr. Hamza's on the other screen, and in my head I'm going, well. <laughs> That was what probably what he was, you know, Doc Hamza was hoping for, for everybody to be like, I'm doing telehealth, not bite up the footprint clinics. And then, you know, as Doc Hamza grows and grows and grows with footprint clinics and, you know, telehealth, 
he just keeps on sucking up all those other uh, you know patients that all the hotel health companies are sending to him. Because once you're in there, you're like, well, here's the app, here's this, here's the link, it's done. So, uh, you know, uh, let's go back here. So when you look here, you see that, um, you know, it opened up at 162. It, you know, went down to um, 156 over here and um, it closed at 158. Okay. Uh, Naturally, it's on a down. It's on a downward um, spiral because of uh, because of everything. There's uncertainty in the you know for the retail investor. Don't forget, ninety seven percent point five retail investor in here, right? So they're doing their acquisitions. They're doing everything that they have to do. Um, you know they're keep on buying up. You know their revenue is increasing. Okay, naturally uh, the earnings is dipping down over here, but they're they're buying up companies all over the place. Uh, you know. Yahoo is still putting them between a one and a two for buy, so it's it, you know heading into the strong buy area. Uh, they have an average of three ninety seven for analyst part, price target, right? If you go into here, analyst price target over here, uh, you got three eighty eight as a consensus here on Market Beat. So um, the upside on the company is big. Now what I found crazy is when I went to you know simply Wall Street and I'm looking at it over here. They're stating that it's trading. Look, first of all, let's start with here. When I used to do Clan D like a long, like a long time ago, when they only had ten million um, cash and like you know the revenues, everything was very very small. Uh, they didn't have like <laughs> one analyst or whatever. But if you look now, they got you know six. They got Beacon, Canaccord, Echelon, Laurentian Bank, Research uh, Corporation, Capital Corporation. There's two people from there, and Stevens Inc., uh, Scott uh, Shawnos. So let's close that up. So we're going to do really, really quick over here. Stable share price, volatility over time. So naturally, the stable air, of course, it's going to be more stable. If you can see here, you know, um, here's January 2021. This is, you know, a great spike up here, 314. You now we had some, some beautiful spikes. But, you know, after March, you can see here, you know, if we go we can just take here March, we had March 3rd for the other one. So you go here, March 3rd. And, you know, you could see that 314 vaccines are coming out. And I remember in the groups, a lot of people were talking about, well, the vaccines are out, telehealth. And people became very uncertain around this time. Very uncertain. From January to here, people were like talking, wasn't so much. But they knew April was around the corner. Vaccines were like out everywhere. People were getting jabbed. So it was a lot of like a fear of like losing money starts to go down and then you get you know the big sell off uh in March around uh 275 or something like that 270 February and then March so on on the 3rd well it's not representative over here on there for the 3rd but we know what the price was right Anyway, so you're going over the long long term over here, and you know they have some few spikes, like 232 at one point uh, in July. You know where there was fear of the Delta variant that came out and overtaking the vaccines and some of that. And then we we said, oh, the vaccines are still quite effective to it. So you know, there you go. So there's a big and look at that. You know, um, it just starts like the drop over here. It's not pretty. The drop over there is not pretty at all. Yeah. So let's take a look over here. So if you look at it with the Bollinger Bands and stuff like that, uh, and you have the uh, moving average here, you're going to see that they're putting it, these two are reaching at the 218 mark. But the Bollinger's got them at 218, 186, and 154 and you can see that there's there is pressure a down a downward pressure here people are getting afraid there are, you know if you look at its chart from you know if you had it from last year we got one week event here let's go for one year all right Let's take this off. Let's take this off as well. October, November.
Okay, so June, July. As you can see here, we're at 60 something cents, 50 something cents. And in August, it starts to really spike. I was in and around this price here when I got in originally. So it starts to really spike, and the spike is quite significant. I mean, you're reaching already $3 by um, October. Um, you know, you know. Look, it's you can't say that this isn't a you know a play. A lot of people came in really quick, put in a lot of money. Then you you get your you know your your pullbacks, consolidations, and then you know you have other spikes along the way. And you know you could see here, you could see here the drop that's forming. And if this was you know because when you look at Pre Cloud MD, uh, Premier Health, you're looking at um, you know between 35 and 70 cents. You're looking around that range, and then when you look at this here in this range, I mean it's not the same. It's not the same company as a long time ago. Don't forget they have the app that started Cloud MD is Cloud MD. It's not Premier Health, right? It's new technology. It's a whole new nine yard vertical integration. It's a much bigger company. They have a, you know a board now and a whole nine yards. It's it's you can't compare it to then. You know, I'm looking at this is this is a great deal for CloudMD. You know, you're buying it at 158. That's a great deal for CloudMD from where for where they are and where they're going to be. So if I look at this, and I'm just going to go to a few different places. I mean, this I find is this is crazy. Um, you know, we have mostly around four dollars. I'm just rounding everything out when you look at Yahoo, when you look at Market Beat, stuff like that. But simply Wall Street with the six different uh, people are estimating they put the fair value at twenty eight forty four. That's quite impressive because if you know if let's say everybody was saying that oh this would be a twenty eight forty four, why wouldn't a person in, invest in uh, in this in this company right? I mean like the upside is absolutely phenomenal. Even someone that could double their money, the upside is phenomenal. Depending on how much money you're putting in, and you know the time that you're going to wait for that to happen. Future growth, 71.2%. Uh, when we look at revenue and earnings, naturally what you're doing is um, you're looking at over time. 2023 looks to be like a great year uh, for CloudMD. When you look at earnings, free cash flow, everything is going between 20, like 2022, 2023. That's when you know, you're going to be looking at probably even a lot more investors in this company. So it's saying that it's going to be profitable in the next three years, earnings versus market. You know, forecast to be profitable in the next three years. High growth earnings is expected to become profitable again in the next three years. Revenue versus market. Docs, 26 million years forecast to grow faster than the Canadian market. High growth revenue. Docs revenue, 26 million years forecast to grow faster than 20% per year. Okay. Um, earnings per share growth forecasts. You're looking once again, 2023 to be like a big breakout year um, for CloudMD. Um, earnings right now, we saw even on the graph when it came up, to, when you looked at Yahoo over here, let's just go back, and you looked at the site, you can see that the revenue and the earnings are pretty much representative of what you're seeing here. Um, short-term liabilities is, you, you know, your short-term assets, um, you, you have more than your long-term uh, liabilities and your uh, short-term liabilities as you can see here so you can see the financial position they're in a good financial position and they also have cash uh, that can last them over three years which is excellent okay so short-term docs short-term assets exceeds its short-term liabilities and sh short-term assets exceeds its long-term liabilities so that's very very good stable cash one runway has more than three years based on it they, right now they have over 60 million dollars in cash they had a uh, hundred million at one point or just very close to it um, but they're buying and buying and buying, so it's, it's very hard to to say, oh well, you know, it's um, that you know the money's not being spent intelligently, right? So when you look here, you know, you, we have to forgive a lot of the people that are on, you know, like let's say Julia Becker, like thinking about you know, uh, Cloudium, the uplisting in uh, June, July, you know, uh, some of the people that you know are here for Cloud and um, for between plays. Got emails and stuff like that, and so did other people on, um, you know, CloudMD shareholders group, and you know, we uplisting up, you know, yes, we're supposed to, yes, we're supposed to, and next thing it doesn't happen. 
Why? Because now they're going to um, concentrate on vertical integration and you know, organic growth and whole nine yards, and they want to be in a better position in order to uplist. So can you really you know, say that that's a bad thing? Of course we wanted it because we wanted it to, to skyrocket, right? We wanted to get to $5. And compete with well health you know on that level but the, the thing is this with what had happened if you really take your emotions out of it with what had happened it wouldn't have been a good thing for for the uplisting at that moment there's a lot of animosity with people getting out of the company and all this kind of stuff like the retail investors you know a lot of people are still upset about what happened in all nine yards so it's better like out of sight out of mind you know let this all cool down a year is going to pass People are going to be like, oh, cloud MD, cloud MD, cloud MD. But we always have to remember, fool me once, fine, fool me twice, mm, not so good. So this whole selling of $4 million can't happen again. It happens again. The retail investors are just, just going to be like, well, you know, I, I like the company and stuff like that, but I don't like, you know, what's happening on the inside. So everybody's just, you know, people are just going to take the money away. And, that, and that's the same thing with, you know, corporations, right? Institutions. Institutions don't don't, you know, want to see like, you know, a massive chunk of, you know, CEO or you know, the insiders like sell off like almost all their shares and just like make, a, you know, boatload of money while everybody, you know, the tank, you know, everything's tanks and everybody's like going, what, the f what's going on? Don't forget a lot of companies got in at, you know, over $2, right? Or 180, two something, 250, two. So it, it doesn't, you know, we don't know what happened, but, you know, Fool me once, but fool me twice. Mm. So we have people here less than one year. We know that because we saw when when they created the board and stuff like that. So here you go once again. You know, two individuals. You know, one million nine hundred thousand, and it's the CEO, right? <laughs> and, and you know, it's just, it's yeah. So naturally, there's a lot of buybacks. He has more now than he had before. But now, you know, people are going, well, what if I did put my money in now at, you know, 158? What if I put in 10,000 or 20,000 or whatever I can afford to lose or something like that? Can I afford to lose it really? What I can afford to lose? Because when you say I, I want to put in what I could afford to lose, your brain is always saying, well, I believe it's going in that direction, right? It's like you're playing options, right? So you're, you believe it's going in a certain direction. That's why you're doing that. If you're so, like, if you're insecure right now and you need time to pass by, then naturally this wouldn't work out. Um, so here we go. We still have 97.3% is general public. So the retail investor has a lot of power over here, all right? Um, you know, for in voting and the whole nine yards. Institutions, I remember when I was doing this before, you wouldn't even have any institutions up here. You have, you have 1.2 and um, you got some of the companies here. Stonecastle, uh, Vescor, LDIC, Independent Financial Partners, American Research Capital Finance Partners, Asset Management Team. Um, you know, do I believe that um, CloudMD should still be a part of your portfolio? Yeah, I do believe that CloudMD should still be a part of your portfolio. Why? Because you have to understand something. Dr. Hams has been at this at a long time. Dr. Hams has been doing this since um, 2003 with Health, uh, Health View, and then Premier Health. After that, and then building and building and building, and then getting um, you know CloudMD, right? One second here. All right, whatever. <laughs> I'm trying to get this on one screen here, and it is just not working. And I don't understand why it's not working. Oh, it's, yeah, it just seems to be frozen in time. So anyways, look, um, you have someone that's been here at it since 2003, and at one point, person's got to have something to show for all that work. 
Um, so yeah, I hope that whatever it was that had that you know was going on with that money, like for tax purposes, or you know you you know you, you know, you're like okay, well now I'm gonna do this, do that, do that. I'm gonna take a vacation, I take a break. I gotta do this. I gotta I'm gonna buy that new house. I'm, I don't know what happened. I have no idea. I'm just you know because we're speculating because we don't know we don't have anything else. But all I'm saying is I can't. I can't say like that someone that's been working at this since 2003, you know, he got into uh, his practice in 1999, someone that's been this for so long that they shouldn't be able, to, you know, they should be a they should be able at one point to enjoy um, their life. And, you know, that's what I'm saying. So if it's like this one time and everything like that, and then it's like every other CEO, you know, like, okay, the holidays are around the corner and then you see them sell off a bit of shares and, you know, then they buy back some shares and then you see them sell off another bit of shares and stuff like that at the next holidays or, you know, before the summer starts. I mean, everybody does it. It's, you know, whether you're, you know, in Apple or 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 anything of the sort, everybody does it. So that's quite interesting. You know, my computer lately has just been doing exactly this non-responsive. I don't understand why, but this is what it's been doing. It's really interesting. Just makes me wonder if this is going to actually save. So anyway, um, yeah, I still think it should be a part of you know of everyone's portfolio. Um, my wife is in uh, Cloud MD. Um, when I couldn't pay attention because I you know uh, Doc Hamza sells his shares, I still had my shares and stuff like that. And then because of what happened with my nephew and stuff like that, I just um, I had to get out of a whole bunch of shares that I just I couldn't keep my eyes on because my brain wasn't processing things right and that. so I got more into creating to try to um, clear my senses and because uh, I couldn't fully concentrate so what I did is I went you know overweight on cruise lines and um, on neolithium but it was it was very you know small amount of stuff like three stocks let's just say like air you know air Canada Neolithium and, um, and 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 cruise lines. My wife is in Cloud MD. You know, she's like, should I get out? No. You know, um, a lot of you know, there's people I still know uh, in my in my friend group, uh, Skylight Health Group. You know, I wasn't very happy about about what happened in Skylight Health Group. You know, it was going up before the uplisting was at 179. I was like, widely profitable. A lot of our people too. And then all of a sudden, boo! You know, sells a ton of shares at at one dollar forty cents. We're all locked in, and when it opens up, it's already at dollar forty cents. So you're like, "Oh my God, do I? You know, what am I going to do? What? Where's? You know, already people know that now you're going to be uplisting. Is you know, it's like five to one. And everybody knows what happens after it's five to one. People start taking out their money and stuff. So you're already at a loss, and now your loss is bigger. So that wasn't cool neither uh, to be all stuck in that because you know we should have been able to get out. You know, when you see like, "Oh my God, there's one forty a share." Like you know, people just start selling off. Because they sold off anyways after the five to one, so why not let us sell off when you know the one forty comes, you know, into play and lock it out, and then you open it up like the next day or whatever. Because I remember waiting a long time for that to open up, and then you know opens up at one forty, and you're like, really, really, wow, that's that's special. And then you do a five to one, and now people are taking out even more. That's not cool at all. Yeah. So, anyways. Um, couldn't concentrate so what ends up happening is I just you know I was like okay I, I need to like simplify my life right now you know I'm putting on weight I was over like 40 pounds uh you know can't concentrate so yeah so I got cruise lines overweight all these other ones did I tell my wife to go no I said you keep that you know you keep an eye on that you see where it's going so like that talk to me I'll look into it I'll write articles I had articles go up I focused on uh, between plays, um, uh, the you know the, the website, my Twitter account, growing the Facebook group, uh, group uh, Canadian American Stock Ideas. That's another one of between plays groups, uh, over a thousand two hundred members. So if you're on Facebook, and you're not part of Canadian and American Stock Ideas, well, you should be. Go in the description below, and there'll be a link for that. And of course, there's between plays groups too, and Facebook page. So I'm working on all that and my Twitter, and it was more to be creative more than anything else. 
Now I'm back. I'm going to be doing a lot of these videos. At 158, I think CloudMD is very attractive. Uh, you know, you're looking at 388 stock, 390 dollars stock. You're looking at something that's growing. I, but I'm going to be honest with you. I really think that what Dr. Hamza said a long time ago is true. Telehealth was a marathon. It was huge, a marathon. It was a very long run. But what ended up happening is that it went into a sprint because of the pandemic. Telehealth became the forefront. I remember going, wow, what the hell, Teledoc? Teledoc is over $100 and stuff like that. And I'm, I never even heard of the company before. So it, it just brought everything to the forefront and people started going crazy on telehealth. Now we know about telehealth. We understand it. It's there. A lot of companies went IPO'd and we understand it's the future. The key word is that it's the future. And that's where I'm saying, well, what stock should we balance out? Because now that the pandemic's becoming more of an epidemic, well, if you're 20 years old and you have money in dock for retirement, I think that's, in my opinion, that's a great thing. If you're, you know, 50 years old and you're hoping to retire in the next 10 years, maybe not. Because I think that companies like CloudMD and Well Health and all these companies, I think that they went from a marathon to a sprint, but now they're like at a half marathon or something like that. So if you know you were looking at over the next 20 years to you know that you know it was it's going to revolutionize the industry and it's going to be the way people are going to be using it. Yeah, I can see that over the course of the next 20 years, especially as all these children are growing up and are going to be just so proficient on social media. So pro I mean, like, you know, my kid goes to school and they, you know, kids are like, oh, do you know how to do this on the computer? Like, it's another world. It's another world today. So people are going to be very comfortable. Children are going to be very comfortable. And then as they grow into teenagers and adults, this is going to be second nature to them. Whereas you have Generation Xers that you know, grew up with technology and had to advance with technology. So there's an understanding of technology in a different form. But children, it's just it's just born. It's just like, it's like in them. You give like a two-year-old an iPad and they know how to open it up. You're like, uh, was that in your DNA? Because I was using it and your mom was using it. And then we had you because how the hell did you know how to do that? It's freaky when you see children using these these things and you're just going, Okay, and then they're like on YouTube, and they're just, they're, and they're like five years old, six years old. They're just like click, 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 click. Move this, move this. They don't even understand. It's for. They don't even understand when. They, <laughs> it's funny because I've seen my kids do this, man. They'll go up to the TV screen, and they're gonna go and start trying to swipe, and it's like, it's like Daddy, it's broken. No, it's not broken. It's it's a TV screen, man. It's not an iPad. It's not. It's not. You know, it's not the same thing. Then they're like, oh, I don't understand. What's the difference? Or when my my kids, you know, um, because, you know, you go on Netflix and they're used to going to Netflix and they're seeing things, right? But then they get, they start seeing stuff on YouTube as they get older. Um, and then, you know, ads come on. And they're like, daddy, my show is gone. No, no, what do you mean your show is gone? Somebody changed my show. Then you have like one ad and then another ad that comes on during kids' things, but you have to be careful about because uh, sometimes they don't really look at uh, what these ads are. But, um, and then you have ads that come on and they think that, you know, what the hell? Because they don't know what commercials are. And you got to explain to them what commercials are because they've never seen a commercial before. So the old technology that, you know, we grew up with and everything like that, and that we um, become adapted to with YouTube and all these things for the future, that we have a, a different type of understanding. Well, for kids, the old technology is what's foreign to them. <laughs> you know, you show a kid a cassette deck and they're going to be like, or an 8-track or a VHS, you know, beta, you know, it doesn't matter, 8-track. That's how, you know, these, we start getting old now. But you, you, you show these kids that stuff and they're like, how does this work? Like, it's analog for crying out loud. They just have to push button. But they don't understand how it works. It's such old technology that in their head, they've never seen it before. So this is more normal for them. So when you have things like telehealth, you have to always put that in your mind that these kids, when they're going to be 20 years old, if they don't have telehealth, they're going to be like, what? You mean I got to go to a clinic to go get prescription? 
they're not going to understand the old dinosaur barbaric savage ways of doing things of like i gotta get into a bus and you know waste gas see this is a this is the big thing now there won't be any gas hopefully with new vehicles by that time in 20 years from now and that's something i want to get into very soon uh, in comparison about uh, where you might want to put your money depending on your age and the thing is is that they're going to see this as barbaric so, you know, when you look at the, you know, billions of dollar industry of telehealth, well, I don't see why a person wouldn't want to be in something like CloudMD with, you know, um, using IBM to create the apps and the whole nine yards and buying cloud-based systems um, and, 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 and revolutionizing the, uh, the healthcare system. Just look at their acquisitions or in pharmacies or this or that. We don't have to talk about stuff. We already know all that stuff. Today, it's like, should a person have in their portfolio? Yeah, of course, absolutely. Fool me once, fool me twice, we'll see what happens. All right? So now, if you're older, maybe you might want to take your chances more in lithium kind of stocks. Because that's for my next video, and that's going to be coming up. So look, everybody. I'm back everything's great here comes another video and it's gonna be on lithium stocks and hit the subscribe button guys because i'm back I'm back baby i'm back and i'm gonna be doing tons of videos i'm gonna be doing live videos and be doing live videos with money a and uh, with mark shaland and i'm gonna be doing lots of videos we're gonna have ceo interviews in the whole nine yards i'm back i'm here to stay we're here for the future i said it a long time ago said it back last september Listen, it's been one year of between plays from September to September, August to August for the YouTube channel, September to September for the website, for Twitter, uh, for Facebook, the Facebook group and all that kind of stuff. So yes, I plan on being here for the long haul, for the future, and I'm not going anywhere. So anybody that's going to be here for the short term and whatever, I'm not here for the short term. I'm retired. You know, I've done my, my, my previous career, my first career. I'm retired. This is my new life. I'm not going anywhere. So hit the subscribe, hit the like button for all the shows for the future to come. All right, guys. Always remember, no, I'm not a financial advisor, but you know, I've taken stuff in uh, you know, school back at McGill, back at Concordia. Um, always remember you have to do your own due diligence. I love the stock market. It's always been something I've been wanting to do since I've been a young, young kid. Didn't have the opportunities back then. Didn't have the know-how, didn't have that mentorship, went into um, into law instead. So I love investigating. I love doing all these kind of things. I love digging in. I love doing research. So here we go, guys. Always remember, research, prepare, plan, execute, stay strong, never give up. Hello to everyone out there. Just taking two seconds of your time and asking you to hit the subscribe and the like button. I'd like to also direct you to betweenplays.com, www.betweenplays.com, where we put up many different articles. We have three different writers at the moment, and we're trying to up the uh, authors. And um, go to our Twitter account for like really quick uh, information, at betweenplays1, and um, we'll be able to uh, get people to you know pre-market information and whatever comes along that you know, it's important to uh, macroeconomics, microeconomics. As we say here, our motto, research, prepare, plan, execute. Uh, always do your due diligence and um, stay strong, everybody. Stay strong. <laughs>